This is a very difficult question. And the answer, no matter what answer I give, some people are going to be highly offended, highly taken back, and even accuse me of teaching error. It has to be understood in the greater context of what the New Testament says about the subject of Christology. In Philippians, Jesus never gave up his deity, but he gave up the privilege and power of his deity and became one of us in the likeness of man, with one exception. He did not have a fallen nature. When Adam was first created, Adam did not have a fallen nature. When Jesus was incarnated, he did not have a fallen nature. Adam's body and the body of Jesus, the physical body of Jesus, were directly created by God. Neither were created by procreative agency. They were created by God himself, okay? As God, obviously, Jesus could not sin. But once he laid aside the power of his deity, he subjected himself to the same temptations we are. He was tempted in all manner as we are. Only the first Adam blew it. The first Adam gave in to the temptation. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the boastful pride of life. Satan deceived him. So when Adam all died. When Satan tried that with the second Adam, he failed. Hence, in the second Adam, all who repent and believe are made alive. The theoretical possibility existed. However, we have to understand it by comparing it to the fulfillment of Isaiah 52 and 53 in the Lord's crucifixion and resurrection. Was it theoretically possible that the Jews would have repented and believed Jesus to be the Messiah? The theoretical possibility was there, but it was predicted it would not happen. In the greater sense, foreordained it was not to be. God would rather use the rejection of Jesus as a way to make him an atonement for sin. So mankind could be saved, or at least those from mankind who believed and repented. Well, it's the same thing. The theoretical possibility was there, but it was foreordained from eternity and predicted that he would not. That is as close as we can understand it and explain it. At least it is as close as I can understand it and explain it. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed in the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. 
will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Parpezzo, Parpezzo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available in the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.